Israel, a country that for geographic and political reasons is focusing on non-fossil fuel solutions. Israel has emerged as one of the world's leading hubs for technological innovation. The Council on Foreign Relations says Israel has more startup companies per capita than China or India or all of Europe. And some of those companies are developing potentially revolutionary clean energy concepts, as Energy Now Chief Correspondent Tyler Suters shows us in our continuing look at the Israel Connection. Of all Jerusalem's holy sites, the workplace of an ancient priest is where inventor Daniel Farb draws inspiration. Well, right, that's the location. It's built over the location where the holy temple stood. And Ben Katina served there? That's right. Ben Katin was the uh, high priest uh, at the time. The time, 2,500 years ago. The man, Ben Katin, a Jewish priest and inventor of plumbing technologies. The machine, what Farb calls the Ben Katina hydroelectric turbine. Unlike the big hydro turbines, the ones that generate electricity from the flow of rivers, the Ben Katinas are awfully small. They attach to city pipes running on water systems, sewage flows, even rainwater. That means even landlocked cities, think of Atlanta or Phoenix or Dallas, they could produce emission-free hydroelectricity. The important thing about energy is, and what we're doing is that there's a real need worldwide for every place in the world to advance to uh, the category of being in a sustainable environment and sustainable production. Since its founding, the state of Israel has depended almost entirely on imported energy, especially difficult given Israel's neighbors. So the country is searching for unconventional power sources and working with its closest ally, the United States, to bolster energy security. There's nothing like confronting uh, a challenge to force you to come up with uh, new and better solutions. American Andrea Yona is with a U.S.-Israeli uh, governmental um, joint venture promoting and industrial it's research forced, and development. Uh, it's forced them since the very beginning to uh, think outside of the box, to be able to come up with solutions to um, challenging issues. Over the last three years, the foundation and the U.S. Department of Energy have given about $10 million to more than a dozen U.S.-Israeli joint clean energy projects. Projects involving solar energy, grid technology, biodiesel fuel development, projects for the energy challenges both countries face. I think um, both sides by themselves can't do what they can do together. You know, I, I, I it's synergy. It's, it's, it's wonderful synergy. A synergy that could include what's just below the surface of the Red Sea off the coast of Elat. Here, another Israeli energy innovation is beginning to take shape. And that shape looks something like a Lego. We are assembling here inside the tower and the wind turbine on top of it. Kobe Bernhack is one of the minds behind ocean bricks. These are just scaled down models. The real things are giant cement blocks hollow so they can float, big enough to support a wind turbine. Compared to the other systems, we no need to use the big cranes, the big ships, the all expensive diving. Unlike wind turbines off the coasts of Europe or China, places where the turbines are attached to the sea floor, Bernhack says ships would tow the ocean bricks out to sea. Wind turbines already in place. As I said, it's hollow inside. Mm -hmm. We open the valves here. Mm -hmm controlling by computer, of course. And down it goes. And down it goes on the seabed. And down there, once you plug in the turbine's transmission cables and the wind starts blowing, they start sending emission-free electricity to the power grid. Six pieces like this are now sitting in the Red Sea. 50 meters from here. And those six ocean bricks are playing another environmental role. To see for ourselves, our Energy Now team donned wetsuits. It's a little tight. <laughs> a little in places I don't want to show on camera. <laughs> and let ourselves sink into the Red Sea. The submerged ocean bricks, they can become artificial coral reefs, potentially replacing some of the natural reefs lost to environmental changes. Bernhack's company planted these bricks about three years ago. And the marine life in this corner of the Red Sea really seems to like the idea. Pretty cool. <laughs> Wind turbines embedded on those bricks, for now they exist only in computer animation. But Bernhack has a vision, and it involves the United States. If offshore wind farms ever come to the U.S., right now we're still only in the planning stages, 
Bernheck says ocean bricks will be the most cost-effective choice. Only to build one megawatt offshore, and now price, the existing price, is around six million dollars. And with your set, the price we would can be? cut the price about three point five million dollars. Planting ocean bricks off the North Atlantic coast would be another example of the American-Israeli clean energy partnership. Israel brings its uh, innovation, its technology, um, its thinking out of the box ways, and the U.S. brings the ability to take those new technologies and bring them to market. Exactly what Daniel Farb wants for his other clean energy ideas. This foil shape here is meant to accelerate the wind coming into the wind turbine. Almost like a funnel? It's in a sense like a funnel. That's just a model. This is the prototype for his more energy efficient wind turbine design, the wind tulip. But Farb calls another example of Israeli innovation made for the U.S. market. In Israel, there's um, a very innovative way of thinking, which to some extent you have on, on the West Coast as well. Uh, but here I'd say it's more, sci more scientific innovation and uh, it's more concentrated. And maybe more inspirational as well. Farb is already scouting locations for his Ben Katina turbines in Jerusalem. The holiness of the location uh, helps inspire one to be more intellectually productive. And you're seeing the results so far? I hope so. I hope so. In Israel, Tyler Suters, Energy Now. The projects you just saw are pretty much still on the drawing board, but at least one other has already made it to the U.S. Bright Source Energy, a solar company operating in both countries, is building the largest solar plant in the world in California's Mojave Desert. It's modeled on a smaller version in Israel's Negev Desert and is backed by a $1.6 billion loan guarantee from the Department of Energy, the largest amount the DOE has awarded to a renewable energy project.